Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. I want to thank everyone that has helped, who are helping, and who plan to help. Whether it is by cash or kind. If it's not money, if it's even a prayer of a word of prayer, a kind thought, a good gesture, anything, anything, I am grateful. I've always said I n I have never put money in people's pocket. So if they give me, I am grateful. If it's a hundred dollar, I am grateful because God has been wonderful to me and He has stretched forth His hands through everybody else that assist me in my time of need. So I have to be grateful. Some might not have a hundred thousand dollars. Some might only have hundred dollars. Some might only have fifty dollars. It is really appreciated by me, Jamari, and our entire family. So I want to say a, a big shout out and a big thank you to everybody. Papai, thank you so much for reaching out to me, for answering the call. Um, Jody and Pantry, thank you so much for reaching out to me. You could have avoided the call. You could have just said no. Even you, Papa, you could have said no. You're not going to do anything about this. Mm -hmm. This is just a fitness, or a regular like a fitness. Mm -hmm. But you answered the call and you reached out to us. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. A big thank you to everybody and a big thank you to each and everyone. Hi, morning, morning. Good morning. All right, Tommy, how are you doing? Um, I am okay. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Um, you are from where? You are from White House in West Milan? Yes, but it's a small community on the outskirts of White House called Farm District. Oh, you are from Farm. Okay, that yes. fish, that fishing <laughs> district there, sir. <so. laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, how many children do you have? I have two children, two boys. Mm -hmm. One eleven and one five. So it's the five year old that is. It's the five year old that is sick. Yes. Tell 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 me what's happening. Uh, uh, which, which school he, he used to attend? Uh, which school does he attend? He attended Cloden ECI Early Childhood Institution. Yes. That's in White House community. So before he got sick, what type of what type of boy was he? What what type of child is he? He was a fun loving, energetic. Mm -hmm. Amazing, talkative little boy, opinionated. Yes. Bright, mm -hmm. smart. His name is Jamari Smith. Damari? Jamari? Jamari, J A M A A R I. Smith. Oh, okay, Jamari. Okay. So when was when was it that you start noticing something different with him, or something was happening with him? Well, nothing really happened. Yes. Um. Really, it's just that. He was playing outside with one of his cousins one day, yes. and the gate, the gate pinched him on his the forearm of his right hand. How long? How long ago was that? That happened in probably late May. Okay. Of 2022. Yes. I had an ointment called Superosin at home. Yes. And I use it as an it's an anti-inflammatory ointment. So I used it on on the cut, yes. and um, it just didn't get better. It just started to look infected and swollen. Mm -hmm. So I brought him to a doctor, private doctor, and um, she gave me an antibiotic for him, yes. augmented 475, and told me to continue using the cipriosin. Yes. However, it didn't get better. Um, about six days into using that ointment, I realized that it was, it continued to get worse. Yes. And the morning after that six day when I noticed everything was still getting worse and getting worse, he woke up. I was getting him ready for school and I realized that he had some bumps on him. They didn't look weird or anything. How, how long ago, how, how long ago you start noticing the bumps? About two weeks after he got the, the, the initial. Okay. Cut. And then, and that was six days after he started getting the antibiotic. Yes. And these bones, they weren't a lot, but they, I didn't like them. I didn't like the look of them. So I didn't send him to school. I brought him to another doctor. I called back the other um, 
pediatrician. Mm -hmm. However, she was unavailable, so I had to find another one. And I went to that one, and he aspirated them. Mm -hmm. So there were three in his forehead, one on his right shoulder, one under his right this, this, arm. The, describe, describe, describe those bumps for me. Um, well, they were water bumps. Oh, water bumps. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. One on each butt cheek and one on his right knee. Yes. And um, he aspirated them along with the one on his his forearm that the gate cut. Yes. He aspirated them and um, took samples and sent to a lab and gave him augmenting 600 um, antibiotic and superosin B ointment he said that this this antibiotic was stronger than the last one that he was using and the the ointment had steroids in it so it, it would boost healing more quickly than the other one so i started using those and he also requested that i got some blood tests done for him as well mm -hmm. so i started using those medications the same day the same evening when i got home and um the very next day in the night, I realized that he was having a fever. Mm -hmm. So I decided to bring him into the hospital the following morning. Yes. And they admitted him at some hospital. Yes. They isolated him for a week because they didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And during that week, everything just got worse. Yes. The bumps. The bumps, the blisters started getting growing in size, so each one would grow. So hold on, one second. That the, during that week when they isolated him, did it? Did, you know, of them doing any tests to find out what was happening? A lot of tests oh. were done. I remember okay. one of the tests. A few of the tests I remember um, spending almost forty thousand dollars for two tests. Yes, and then. Um, the hospital assisted me with another, I think it was another two tests, different tests. Yes. And I remember um, paying for some other ones. Yes. And that, that weren't done at the hospital because remember it's public and yes. everything is free. Mm -hmm. So everything that was not done at the hospital, I had to at pay for yes. out of my pocket. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, if it wasn't for that and my health card, mm -hmm. I don't know how more than do it. Yes, but yes. But thank God, I was still em I was employed. Yes. And um, all of these tests were done. Everything came back. His blood works came back clear. His um culture for blood and urine came back clear. Mm -hmm. Everything was okay with him. Yes. They did every test they could possibly do with the symptoms that they had that he had. Mm -hmm. And. Nothing came back with showing anything, any sign of anything. Mm -hmm. So um, they squeezed him in to see a dermatologist at at Cornwall Regional Hospital for the Thursday. Yes. He was admitted on the Saturday morning, Saturday in the day mm -hmm. at some hospital. He was isolated, and um, they squeezed him in for the for the dermatologist appointment on this. Thursday of the following week. Yes. And that's when the dermatologist diagnosed him to have pyoderma gangrenosum. Pyanora? Pyoderma gangrenosum. Okay. Uh, yes. So it's P Y O D E R M A. Yes. Gangrenosum G A N G R E N O S U M. When when was it that he was diagnosed with having that? Uh, he was admitted on the 12th of June, mm -hmm. so it would be the Thursday after that. Okay, okay. We don't mm. have no calendar. Yeah, there, man, that's right? all right. I just want to find out the month or the, the time period. Yes, so what happened after yeah. that? So, um, he, it was just a visit at Cornwall Regional Hospital and to the derm clinic, dermatology clinic, and she saw him, diagnosed him with that, and placed him on steroids, high doses of steroids as well as morphine because 
the pains were excruciating. I had to stay with him for the period that he was isolated. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I could not calm him down. He was in intense pains. He would cry. Even in his sleep, he would mm -hmm. be crying. Mm -hmm. Nothing that they gave him could manage the pain. The bumps grew into blisters mm -hmm. and took over the three bumps, that, the three little bumps that were on the left side of its face. Yes. Grew and covered more than half of his forehead yes. to the left, going down to the end of his eyebrow, left eyebrow. Mm -hmm. The one on his shoulder grew in size as well, and the right shoulder and almost was going down on his right arm mm -mm. Mm -hmm. and was going up to his neck, to, yes. to his neck as well. The one under his arm, the right arm, grew stretching to almost his chest mm -hmm. and the others just like the others they just grew and grew and grew in size yes and then they started training mm -hmm. and then the dressing started mm -hmm. he started high doses of and um steroids mm -hmm. um a medication called ivig yes um that is immunoglobulin and uh immunosuppressant drug, which is cyclosporin. That suppresses the immune system. Mm -hmm. So, basically, the illness is one that causes, that is, it's a disorder of the immune system. So there's Ooh. no real cause of it. Okay. It just, it just pops up. And it, they call it an autoimmune disorder. So, does, does the, the, the gate, that, that, that first, pin, first pension, that had anything to do with it? No, they oh. test him for everything. They test him for oh. everything. Trust me. Okay, okay. So he 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 did not get any what um lockjaw. What do you call it? Lock yes, jaw. yeah, yeah. Tetanus or lockjaw? Yeah, uh -huh. uh -huh. Tetanus. They, yeah. they tested him for that as well. Mm -hmm. They tested mm -hmm. for everything because when I told them what happened to him, they tested for everything because they didn't know what was happening to him until the Thursday. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And the disorder is one that is an autoimmune disorder. Okay. Therefore, the um, it's like the body fighting against itself. Yes, yes. The immune system fighting against it, the body itself. Yes. So they're giving him the cyclosporin to calm it down so that the other medications can work for him to get better. Yes. However, he was not getting better. Mm-hmm. He was still this this the the wound also as they call them continued to grow. He had um dermatologists visit every other Thursday in Montego Bay and everything continued to grow. It, it just they continued to grow in size, mm -hmm. never stopping, not once, never stopping. At one point, he had um low blood count. That was the only issue that he had from, from, like about a month after, and it has continued up to now. Low blood count. Low blood count. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. And he had to get blood transfusions about two times mm -hmm. at that at that point, up to that point. Yes. And then his breathing became a problem, so his oxygen level was very low. So they had to place him on oxygen. And then at one point, he had to be intubated, transferred to Cornell Regional mm -hmm. Hospital mm -hmm. um, Intensive Care Unit, where he was intubated and placed on life machine for five days. Wow. Yes, oh. he was then. After that, he was, thankfully, he was um, extubated mm -hmm. successfully and returned to South Hospital. Yes. And at that point... The doctors at at Cornwall Regional Hospital dermatology team decided that since he's been this was in August this was in September yes and in September they decided that since he's been on high doses of steroids for so long they had to send him to UE so yes. that they can do a complete check of his body because steroids causes issues to happen. Yes. So he can have kidney failure, mm -hmm. he can have brain challenges, mm -hmm. he can have cardiac problems and all of that. So 
they sent him to UE so that they could do a complete check of his body to ensure that his body was doing okay under the, the pressure of um, immunosuppressant drugs mm. as well as high doses of steroids. Yes. So at that point, he was about at 40 to 60, between 40 and 60 milligrams per day of prednisone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, they sent him, they transferred him up here to UE on the 2nd of October 2022. Mm -hmm. They treated him. Hold on, hold on. Ho one second. You said up here at UE. You didn't say up there. Are you at UE now? Yes, I'm at UE now. Wow. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. So, um, up to that point, he received another blood transfusion mm -hmm. um, before he was transferred to UE. Yes. And um, since then, he started get well, when he came up here, Mm -hmm. Well, at least I should say, before he was transferred to to UE, they found out that his body he had a fungus. No, sorry, an infection in his blood. Oh. Mm -hmm. And they started giving him vancomycin. Mm -hmm. Throughout all this time, he did not go home any at all. Mm -hmm. So he's been in the hospital since June eleven, mm -hmm. June twelve, sorry, and he oh. did not go home once. Whoa, whoa. When he's when he was transferred here now, they continued the vancomycin. well, I think they stepped up the dose mm -hmm. of vancomycin antibiotic mm -hmm. and they found a fungus on his skin as well mm -hmm. and one in his head. Oh, I should have told you that. In August Yes. He started having the the, the sores come up in his head. He never had any before, but yes. it started coming up in his head in August. Yes. While he was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and the doctor told me that it was a different illness. It wasn't it wasn't the pyoderma gangrenosum, but it was a, like a relative of the illness yes. that come up after the illness in some patients. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name of it, she told me, but she told me the name. Well, she gave me four names that it could have, it could be one of those. Yes. So anyways, um, in, when he was at you, you know, they found the fungus, one on his skin and a different one in his head. Mm -hmm. And they continued treating him for the infection in his blood, which was causing, causing him to be septic. Mm -hmm. And, um, they treated him about... A month of the medication still he was clear his blood um, infection was gone the fungus was gone they started it treated him with um potassium permanganate on the skin so that he had to be soaked in a bath in that medic in that um, water for about 15 minutes every morning prior to dressings yes and dressings were very extensive and long because mm -hmm. by that time, almost 70%, no, over 70% of his body was covered in, in, the, in the wounds. Wow. And that is from his head go right down? From his head go right down. Yes. Uh -huh. mm. So he had a little bit of space on his face. Mm -hmm. And a little bit, his hands, his hand middle and his fingers. Mm -hmm. um, his, between the knee and his his uncle. Mm -hmm. Or oh, I should tell you that um, every every stick they stick him. Yes. It ulcerated and turned into one of the sores. Wow, wow. So his hands became became the the, the, the the most critical areas. Yes. Because he had to get IV medication in his hands and all of that. And when they ulcerate, they just move it, put it to another area. Because at the time they didn't know what was causing it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, they just continued moving it because he had to get the medication anyway. And his feet, about five or six different areas on his feet, had to get um, IV access as well. Yes, different times, so those became ulcerations as well. 
Um, so those were the, 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 the other issues on his foot as well. Mm-hmm. So they gave him the medication and all of that. And then they started him with a very expensive medication called Infliximab. Yes. This, this one I got through NHS. Mm-hmm. And when I collected the medication at NHS, I almost fainted because I got the receipt and it was $155,000 for two doses. Whoa. Yes, two doses. So even, it's true, even though it's true, NHF, yes, it, it's still... No I, didn't, no, I didn't have to pay. Okay, but, the, but that, that would be pay. the cost outside if, if you were getting it outside of NHF. Probably it would be more, more considering yeah. that is the government. Yes, yes. And then probably get discounts and whatever, whatever. Yes, yes, yes. But probably it would have been more if, if um, if say, for example, you we had to source the drug for me. Yes. And those yeah, two doses are, for, are, are, are what? Um, a day apart, a week apart, a month apart? No, it was two weeks apart. Wow. First. Wow. Yes, and after the second dose, uh, well, after the first dose, there was great improvement. Trust mm-hmm. me, there was so so when, when was it that he when, when was it that he, he, he took he started? He got to... the first dose on the um second or the third of November. I'm November. not I'm not quite sure okay. of the date. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not mm. quite sure of the date of the first mm. one. Yes, but it's November. But, yes. Okay. But in that in that two weeks before the second dose, there was great improvement. Mm-hmm. He even he even stopped getting dress, dressing mm-hmm. done. So there was nothing to dress. So yes. he stopped wearing bandages like on the the tenth of November. Yes. And he he was a miracle because he couldn't he had to be in a bed. He had to wear diapers from from like the the the, the um, from like the, the Wednesday after being admitted or the Thursday mm. after being admitted, he mm. had to be wearing diapers mm-hmm. from June uh, up until the day when they stopped dressing him. Yes. Mm. And it was such a miracle for me to see him come from where he was. Mm-hmm. At one point at UE, they closed him off. There was no visitation nobody couldn't go to his bed except me and the nurse Mm -hmm. and when the nurses were coming they had to be covered in from head to toe yes i couldn't i couldn't touch him without using a gloves Mm -hmm. i couldn't even as much as hug him and comfort him Mm -hmm. during the pain without um protective gears on me and he had reached to a point where I could hug him, I could give him a kiss without a mask. Yes, yes, it, yes. It was it was such an amazing thing for me, and it it. So so after the second so the second this after the, the second, second dose, dose yes the second dose was the seventeenth of November, mm-hmm. and he was discharged from U E Hospital mm-hmm. for home that very same evening. Yes, after. I was almost six months of being in the hospital. Mm-hmm. He almost couldn't walk. Mm-hmm. He had to. He had to be practicing to walk. Yes. And he was changed drastically. His 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 features were changed drastically. He was now under almost seventy five percent of his body was covered in scars, and they were not pretty. Mm-hmm. They are not pretty. Trust me. Mm-hmm. But he is here with me, so I'm happy. Mm-hmm. And the steroids fat him up. Yes. So his face get run up. Yeah. And yeah. he fat, and he weigh more than when did weigh before. Yes. But he's still the same Jamal because still sharp mouth, mm-hmm. still feisty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was okay. So we went home. On the 18th of November, back to West Milan, because I have a sister that lives up here. Okay. So she's who I stay stay with when I'm up here. Yes. When I'm not sleeping at the hospital, I Mm. sleep at her house. Yes. And we went down the 18th. 18th. Mm -hmm. He was okay. They told me he had to get another dose of the Infliximab. Mm -hmm. Um... 
within four weeks' time. So it's a regime. Yes. They have to follow that regime when they're giving him the infliximab. So it was two, four, two weeks, four weeks, then six weeks, and then eight weeks, mm-hmm. up until to about two years. So um, I gave them the, the, the instructions to the hospital itself. However, they were not able to source the medication because it's very costly, as I said, and it's not very easily sourced. So the medication was not sourced um, for the deadline for him to get the drug. Yes. Which would have been which would have been between the fifteenth and the eighteenth of September. Of December. Of December. December, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So on the twentieth I started seeing activities around the scars. Wow. Yes. So I I started making some cut well no, not the not the nineteenth. I think it was the fifteenth. The seventeenth. Mm-hmm. I started making some calls and um, tried to get the, the, the medication ready. <laughs> um, when it when we finally got it, I had to bring him back to you because they told me that if the slightest the slightest thing I see coming back, the yeah. slightest bump I see come come up on his skin, mm-hmm. any little thing I notice, I need to bring him back yes. to the Durham clinic <laughs> up here. So. I brought him back and it so happened that the medication was sourced, but I had to collect it from Bustamante Hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, the same day when I came to Kingston with Jamari, however, they were not able to admit him up here because he had, it had to, it has to be given IV. Yes. So every time he's supposed to get the medication, he would have to come back to the hospital for it. So um, on that day when we came now, it was too late, plus we didn't have the space to admit him overnight. Mm-hmm. So um, we, he, they sent us back to SAV, and SAV admitted him on the Tuesday. Yes. Oh, no. The Saturday, when I, came, when I went back to SAV with him, um, they, tested, they have to do blood tests before they give him the medication to ensure that everything is okay with him. And on that Saturday, they found out that his white blood cells were raised. Wow. So, yes, so that that is a sign of infection. Yes. So they can't give him the medication. Mm. So um, they told me to come back with him on the Tuesday. Um, that would have been Boxing Day. Mm-hmm. I went back the Tuesday. His breathing, his oxygen level was low, so they admitted him. However, the white blood cells were not raised anymore. Okay. So they, they could give him the medication, but they still admitted him because his, his oxygen level was low. Yes. So um, they were trying to find out what... It, so they placed him on oxygen and tried to find out what was wrong with him. To trying to find out what was wrong with his breathing, why his saturation was so low because it was at 87 or 88 instead mm-hmm. of 96. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. don't come. Um, so, sorry about that. Yeah, man, that's right. So, um, he spent two weeks in the hospital at that point. They did a CT scan on his chest to find out what was wrong. They did not find anything out. They just um, treated him with oxygen mm-hmm. and uh, gave him some breathing. Ex- oh, oh yes, sorry. They found out that half of his right lung, the lower half, was not working as it should. Wow. Yes. So they treated him with oxygen. Yes. And high doses of oxygen mm-hmm. and um gave him a little I don't know what it's called mm-hmm. but it's a little thing that that treats that gives him that he has to practice mm-hmm. yes. breathing exercises. Yes. Yes, so that um it will probably retrain his lungs to take full deep breaths mm-hmm. and to work again. Yes, yes. Yes. 
So mm-hmm. he's on that now, well, not really now, because he's at the hospital and he's getting oxygen. Mm-hmm. Um, he was discharged from Stav Hospital on 96 oxygen mm-hmm. saturation level on room temperature, so he was able to go home. Yes. However, on the night that I was taking him home, I realized that I saw some activities around the scars again. Yes. And this time, it was two weeks after he had gotten the last dose. Mm -hmm. Exactly two weeks of getting the last dose of infliximab. Mm -hmm. So I I became worried, but I didn't want him to stay at Stab. I I chose Yui to Mm -hmm. a point where, because they, they were the one that, Helped him to that point of getting better. So yeah, man, underst- I wanted to, understood, understood. Mm-hmm. I wanted to bring him back up here, so I took him home the same Wednesday evening. And I, on the Thursday, I got in contact with the Durham team because they gave me an email address to say, if anything, I should email them and send them pictures or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, I emailed them on the Thursday. And they told me to bring him on the Friday to Kingston. And the, the gentleman, the doctor told me, to, he called me back and told me um, to bring things for him just in case that they have to admit him. Mm-hmm. I did. When I came up here on the Friday now with him, they said they wouldn't readmit him. They just, at that point, they had lowered the dose of 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 prednisone so he was now on 20 milligrams per day mm-hmm. no 15 milligrams per day so they raised it to 25 milligrams per day Whoa. and said mm-hmm. i should watch him and mm-hmm. um and i had to be dressing him as well because the activities the sores came back yes so i had to dress him as in use gauze and tape or whatever and dress him. Mm-hmm. So um, on the Saturday, he was really sick. He didn't want to get up out of the bed. He just want to lie down one place. Yes. So I realized that the pains were excru- excruciating and he couldn't, he couldn't manage anymore. So mm-hmm. on the Sunday, I reached out. It got worse, mm-hmm. so I reached out to the doctors at the derm, at um, you and the derm team again, and they told me to bring him in for admission on the Monday morning. Mm-hmm. So I brought him up here at you at you mm-hmm. at you and yes. he's been admitted since. Yes. So this time they can't give him the infliximab again because. It's not the time for him to get it as yet. Yes. So he has to wait eight weeks to get it. And at this point, he was only at three weeks. Yes, yes. So he couldn't get it yet. Mm-hmm. So they had to improvise. They had to find some other means to get him red, get him better. Mm-hmm. So they decided to give him another drug called IVIG. He got that already once. Okay. But this one, I didn't know the cost of it Mm -hmm. when he got it the first time. Yes. But I had to go to Bustamante to collect it. Mm -hmm. And it was, when I got it, I saw the receipt. Mm -hmm. And because I had to sign the receipt, it's $460,000. Whoa, almost half a million dollars. Almost half a million dollars for two doses. Yes. Because the doctors had prescribed five doses, but. They, they couldn't, they didn't have any more than the two doses. And the two doses was, is, was a, um, a collection of eight boxes in mm-hmm. the box that I got. Yes. And it has to be given by Ivy, by the name. Ivy, immunoglobulin. Okay. So they, they were, quest- they, they wanted to get the other three doses, but they said, considering the cost mm-hmm. and the way to get it, they're going to try the two doses first. And see if it works. And if it works, then I don't need to get the other three doses. Yes. 
thankfully it seems to be working so mm. um i don't think well they told me they don't need the other two those the other three doses yes yes but his breathing remains a problem they oh. did a they did a ct of his chest just the other day and um think about four four days ago Mm -hmm. And they realized that he has a slight infection on his chest. Mm -hmm. So that is what is being treated now with antibiotics. I'm not sure how many days are left. Okay. But mm -hmm. apart from that, he's okay. Mm -hmm. He he only has a few wounds open on his on his thighs. Mm -hmm. Um. So only the thighs are being dressed now. So yes. Thankfully. Mm -hmm. It's okay for now. It's okay. You spoke with him this morning? Yes, I, actually, I was beside him when you called uh, to step away. <laughs> yes. and come so, what, what is he saying? What is he saying? He was sleeping when I left. Oh, he was sleeping. Okay. okay, okay, he was sleeping. I'm outside now, and um, he just woke up. When mm -hmm. you he heard me say, um, don't come. Yes. He woke up and he started crying because he didn't see me. So, mm -hmm. I just told him, I won't come back. Oh, so if you get up and you don't see him, start, he, he cries. Yes, man. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but look here, Tommy. Tommy, me know say me know said this is supposed to be casting your arm and a leg. Since oh gosh, I think I think he arm and leg passed already. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I've, yes, how, how was? Okay. I, I, have you been getting any any assistance from anywhere? Yes. Okay, yeah. I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. Since he got ill, I had to stay with him in isolation. Mm -hmm. So from that very same Saturday he was admitted. Mm -hmm. I had to send in a, 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 a vacation leave mm -hmm. at work. Yes. And I have I did not return to work until the third of January. Oh, so this, I've been uh, out of work since okay. since, Janu since June twelfth. Okay. And I stopped getting a salary since July. Yes, because the vacation leave would have ended, so you, you weren't. Yes. Leave of absence? Paid, paid vacation leave ended in, in, in July. Ju okay, okay. A part of July, I should say. Mm -hmm. So I was on no pay leave. Yes. Yes, no pay compassionate leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I had, to, I had to submit letters mm -hmm. um, to my job to say that my son is sick. And then I had to get supporting letters from the doctors who were treating him to yes. say, yes, he's sick for real and he's mm -hmm. hospitalized and whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I had to get all of that done before I got no pay leave. So I still have my job now, thankfully. Thankfully, yes. Yes, I still have my job and I can go back to my job. I went back on the third. Mm -hmm. However, he got sick almost two weeks after, so I had to stop working again. Oh, so, so it's a most, a mo most, if not all your funds have been depleted, no? Everything. Lord of mercy. Everything. I remember one test I had to pay for, mm -hmm. it had to go overseas. Yes. And I had to go to the bank, physically go to the bank, buy the U.S. because it had to be paid for in U.S. Mm -hmm. I had to buy, it, buy the U.S. Mm -hmm. Then I had to pay shipping and handling for almost ten thousand dollars yes just oh. for just the two tests yes 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 just the two tests there is a go I yeah go ahead mm -hmm. about, about i remember i was about three thousand dollars short mm -hmm. and i had to call somebody and they sent it to me immediately because we don't want to hold up because remember it may be sick and we don't know what happened so mm -hmm. we have to try do everything where doctor tell me to do Yes, yes, yes. Remember that day, almost fear me never have. Mm -hmm. I almost never have no fear to go home. But they have to get it done. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. There is a GoFundMe account for, for him, right? Yes. That okay. GoFundMe account was created when he was in um, intensive care okay. at Cornwall. Okay. Because... Things started to get really and, and it's and it's a go for me. We are getting you are getting the, the funds from it, right? Because I know sometimes some persons have issues getting their funds. No man, it's okay because okay. um the other day they emailed the person. It had to be created over. I know, I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. So um they emailed the person and tell them that 
because they weren't seeing any activity on the account, mm -hmm. then we would have to draw the money. Okay. Um, they draw, they, they drew some of the money mm -hmm. just to show some activity. Yes. And it took about, it took about two weeks, mm -hmm. but she got it mm -hmm. and she sent it to me. So okay. thankfully that has helped me. So that so persons can so persons can still go to that GoFundMe and and donate yes, because it's still active. It's and, still active. And do you have a bank account in Jamaica where persons can donate if they wish to do so? Yes, I have a bank account. Oh, let me let me say this before I go any further. Mm -hmm. That GoFundMe account was created because I have an aunt that lives in New York, mm -hmm. and um, she works at a hospital. Yes. And she, when things started happening with Jamari, everything started escalating. We didn't know what was happening and all of that. Mm -hmm. She approached a doctor over there mm -hmm. and told them the situation and spoke to them. And they said we should try and get him up there. Up there, yes, yes. yes. Okay. A hospital called NYU Langone. So so it's New York University. Yes. Langone. Yes. Children's Hospital. So, um, so persons might go to go for me and say something about him coming to New York. Yes. Well, we, well, 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 well. The good thing is, the good thing is, he's getting treated here. So the the, the funds, yes. it's still, it's still, it's still needed because I'm sure you are, you are still is. yes. Mm -hmm. What I actually would want. Yes. Because because every now and then the stores come back. As yeah. I, as you heard me say, yes, yes, I'd want further studies done. Oh, okay, so you'd want some as other well opinion, as, yes, 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 as well as something for the scars, mm -hmm. something to be done about the scars because the scars are not pretty. Yes, I'm, I'm actually at the results that I need. I, I'm not, I don't want to send him back to physical school mm -hmm. because children can be horrible. Yes, very. Yes. I remember I remember when he was in the hospital at Sav, mm -hmm. it so happened that one of his classmates was admitted at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the little boy walked up to me and said to me, Miss, he looked like my classmate, but I know him because he looked different. Mm -hmm. I know him, he don't look like him. Mm -hmm. So when he stepped away, Jamari said to me, Mommy, me know him, me know I'm a classmate. Mm -hmm. And we say, your classmate is true. And mm -hmm. he say, yes. And I could just imagine yes, yes. how he felt. Mm -hmm. he never, probably his friend for a long time from class. Mm -hmm. yes. But he never said nothing. Mm -hmm. He never said anything to him. So right now, he's a bit self conscious of how he looks. Yes, yes, yes. He's a, yeah, it's understandable. Because. He knows how he looked. I tried not to let him see mm -hmm. everything, but we couldn't prevent that. Yeah. We couldn't prevent it. And the fact that his hands mm -hmm. were um, affected, both of his hands were affected. Mm -hmm. Even if we could have prevented him from seeing CS, mm -hmm. we couldn't prevent him from seeing his hands. His legs are affected as well. Yes. So he is very self-conscious about it. So I am actually on the result that I'm not so sending him yes. to school, out to school. I am thinking about homeschooling him, getting okay. somebody that will come to the house and teach him. Yes. Or I can teach him to their house because it would be easier for him to learn when they're not in their yes. environment. Yes. So um, to get him to actually go, get, get back into schooling because he, he never really get more schooling. Okay. Because mm -hmm. of COVID. Yes. COVID came and he couldn't go to school when he was three. Mm -hmm. So um, when he was four, school didn't start until, I think it was in November. Yes. And then by the June, he became sick. So um, you have like, what, you have a bank account locally that persons can donate to? Yes, I have a bank account locally. Which bank? That, um, I have two bank accounts. I have one at kosher mm -hmm. and one at, that I use for every day mm -hmm. use like every day for him medications and all of that yes because the medications are very expensive you know mm -hmm. and they're not available through NHS mm -hmm. 
I tell you what you do. When we hang up, just send me the bank information with the account numbers so I can I can yeah. put them on the screen. You know, yeah. uh, send me send me those. I uh, say so you have the GoFundMe, you have the the bank accounts. I understand that an event will be held at. Is it White House in February? Not White House in farm. In farm, White okay. House proper, but in farm. In farm, in yeah. February. Yes. yes. Well, uh, My sister had had one in December as well. She had mm -hmm. a case sale, and it was very successful. Mm -hmm. And that actually helped me a lot as well. Okay. Um, and this one, I am actually going to be a part of the. I am actually a part of the planning yes. team. Yes. So yeah. Um, along with Ricard Taylor, he's a taxi driver on the White House route. Yes, yes, I got, and I got, I got, I got the flyers, so I got, I got to ensure that I, that I post it as okay. well. Okay. Yes. And all of the, the taxi men. Yeah, man, they tell me about it. <laughs> so, are a part of it. Yes, yes. yes. I, I honestly, this, this is actually their second time of donating to us. Yeah, man, big, because you know, you know, Big Mac, him dung palm, me, so Papa, you yes, half, yes, yes, man, yes, <laughs> yes, man, yes. Mac, yeah, Rick, yeah. all of them, the yes. they have been with me from, from <sighs> about, August, from about September, at okay. least from he became very ill to the point where he had to be intubated. I yes. think that is what um, encouraged them. I, I tell you. And this event has mm. reached so far. I um, Jodian Pantry is mm -hmm. involved as well. Yes. He is raising some money. She, she, she says, yes. She, she has contacted me and mm. we've been in contact ever since. She's yes. encouraging me to pray and to, to just trust God. Yes. Because he can make a way. Yes. And I have been doing that so far, so long. I have been doing that because if it wasn't for him, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know where I'd be. Mm. So I have, I have to trust him and I have to give him thanks as well. Mm -hmm. So yes. Jordan Pantry is a part of it. I don't know if anybody sees it. Yeah, man. I'm she, I, somebody sent me something this morning. I think she said she raised, what, $204,000? Oh, so, it reached there. So <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I, I it see. sent me a picture of it. I mean, um, well, two days ago, and it yes. was at 119. Well, it was, well it's now 204. I saw this oh, morning. that is wonderful. That yeah, is man. awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah. why well, I tell you, uh, listening to your story, you know, as a father, I, I can't just imagine what, 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 you know, what you're going through. And trust I mean, me. trust me, yeah, your last year has been, well... But just keep strong. Yeah, I hear it in your voice. You're a strong, you're a strong woman. Just I try stay. to be. Yeah, I man. Try to be because if I break down and if yes, I, yes. I remember at one point I had broken down so bad. Yes, I, yes. I asked God, I prayed, and I said, "Please don't let him suffer anymore." Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I'd rather, I'd rather you take him than <laughs> yeah. let him suffer anymore. Whoa. Honestly, whoa, whoa, I had whoa. reached that point. He's gonna, he's gonna be okay, man. Trust me, there. Mm. He's, he's, he's gonna, going to be okay. he's gonna be okay. And uh, we're okay. just hoping you can raise some okay. funds so that at least. I mean, you is trying the best, but it would be good if you could go overseas and get a second or a third or a fourth opinion, you know. And and you know, to be honest, mm -hmm. I spoke. The doctor saw. The doctors up here because I didn't tell them about any other fundraising things because mm -hmm. them they so far mm -hmm. and I didn't tell the nurses or anybody up here of anything but mm -hmm. they saw mm -hmm. on the internet and one of the doctors from the germ team approached me mm -hmm. well he called me before I, that night I stepped at my sister's house and he called me and he said there's something going on I'm seeing on the internet. Is there a cookout or something for your, for your son? <laughs> yeah. And I said, yes. <laughs> oh, because oh, um, I was wondering if people are exploiting you. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Because trust me not, if you meet Jamar, you know, mm -hmm. trust me, mm -hmm. he makes such an impact on your life. Yes. You, know, you, you can't imagine. Yes, so yes. They, the whole of them up here just love him. Yes, I can imagine. His mouth, his mouth is so. <laughs> they tell me, saying a five year old. They yeah. tell me, saying 20 years. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because of, because of his spirit. His spirit yeah. is so upbeat and so amazing, even though he got through so much. Yes. Yes, it remains to be up there. So they love him. So when they see that, Mm -hmm. They initially had to call me to find out what was happening. If if I'm near do it, yes, or yeah. if somebody just do it, I'm gonna know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they said they even spoke to me about the hospital that I told them about it, and they said, okay, well, I'd like to get involved, and if they ask for any information, just let me know. Yes. They were right away.
ready to help, ready to assist me in any way that they could. Yes. Uh, so, they, and even one of the doctors um, has promised to help me to buy it because at one point they wanted to. It is so difficult to get access in his body. Mm-hmm. Even the one that he has right now, it had to be, he had to go to the theater to get it. Mm-hmm. 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 So, in his hand, and they wanted to put a thick line, they call it, that is a line that goes from his neck into his heart. Mm-hmm. So the medication can go in his body and circulate immediately in his blood. Yes. So um, that line is very expensive. It costs um, 25000 and it's yeah. not avail- it was not available. Only one pharmacy had it, and it was $25,000 for it. Yes, and yes. And one of the doctors offered to assist me with it. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, he didn't need it at the time, so yes. they said just hold on to the money. Mm-hmm. Just in case. Well, Tommy, I think we have had a long talk, and um, definitely anything we can do to assist, uh, you know, and um, just stay strong. I mean, yeah, I think I, I don't think your son could ask for a better mother at this time because trust me, <laughs> <laughs> trust me, trust me, you know, yes, trust me, true. trust me. Just, just, just stay strong, and any assistance we can get to you, we're gonna ensure that you get it. All right. One so the, thing I'd like to say before yeah, you go, yes, and I do, I wanted to put this in, yes. I want to thank everyone that has helped, who are helping, and who plan to help. Whether it is by cash or kind, if it's not money, if it's even a prayer of a word of prayer, a kind thought, a good gesture, anything, anything. I am grateful. I've always said I I have never put money in people's pockets. So if they give me, I am grateful. If it's a hundred dollar. I am grateful because God has been wonderful to me and he has stretched forth his hands through everybody else that has sent me in my time of need. So I have to be grateful. Some might not have $100,000. Some might only have $100. Some might only have $50. It is really appreciated by me, Jamari, and our entire family. So I want to say a big shout out and a big thank you to everybody Papai, thank you so much for reaching out to me for answering the call. Um, Jody and Pantry, thank you so much for reaching out to me. You could have avoided the call. You could have just said no. Even you, Papa, you could have said no. You're not going to do anything about this. Mm-hmm. This is just a fitness or a regular like a fitness. Mm-hmm. But you answered the call and you reached out to us. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. A big thank you to everybody and a big thank you to each and everyone. Yeah, and the stations that are helping, thank you. Uh, Tommy, enough yeah. respect here. Yeah? We'll talk. Yes. Send, 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 right. Remember to send the information to me, you see? I will. I will. All right, thanks. All right. <laughs>